Welcome. What we're going to do today is we're going to build on what we've done already. Um, up to now we've looked at unsigned integers and we've looked at ways to represent numbers using unsigned integers. Then we've also introduced signed integers, which is where the first bit indicates the sign and then if that bit is a zero, the number is interpreted as if it's an unsigned integer. If it's a one, we need to decide which method of representing negative numbers we use. We did three, we did sign of magnitude, one's complement and two's complement. So what we're going to do today is we're going to say let's build on that and let's look at how to represent fractions. How do we represent fractions in binary? So the lecture is about more than that, but what I want to focus on is just that. The first method to do this is to say let's use a fixed point number representation. And essentially all you do when you use that is to say for normal binary we said the least significant was represented by 2 to the power 0, then the next significant bit was 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, and so it continued until 2 to the power n minus 1, where n is the number of bits that you have. What we're saying now is, if we want to represent a binary number which is less than 1 in terms of its fraction, um, how, do we, how do we represent that? And the easiest way to do it is to say, let's just shift this binary point instead of the decimal point which you would call it decimal uh, algebra let's shift this binary point up and then our definition becomes something like 2 to the power 0 dot 2 to the power minus 1 2 to the power 1 which is this is the bit right next to the dot this is the bit right next to the dot as well to the left and to the right and then it continues on that side continues on that side and what you can see is you can then do multiples of a half so you have 1 over 2 1 over 4 1 over 8 1 over 16 and you can then start to add these things together to build up fractions let's just quickly look at the formal definition that's the formal def definition there so the number we're representing is built up of ones and zeros and somewhere inside our number our binary number we put a point. The important thing to take from this is this point is fixed. You can't move it around. It's fixed. So if you decide um, to put it on a certain position or at a certain position, you're stuck. So for example, if you have this five bit number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, if you have these, uh, this, these four, five bits, then if you put the binary point there, you're stuck with it. Then the smallest number you can represent is by making all of its zeros and put a 1 there, which is 1 over 4. So that's the smallest number you can represent. The biggest number you can represent is 111.11. One, one, one one, one. By the way, we're working with uh, integers unsigned here, unsigned integer fractions, just for the time being at least. This is the biggest number you can represent, which is obviously equal to a quarter plus a half, which is this one and this one, plus one, plus two, plus four. So that gives you seven and three quarters. That's the biggest number you can represent with five bits. This is the smallest number you can represent with five bits. And then, obviously, if you want to do an eighth, you have no way to represent that. Also, if you want to represent 12, you cannot. It does not fit into your fixed system. So the net next proposal is to say, let's use a floating point number. And a floating point means exactly that. Floating point means let us float the point. And instead of us using all our binary bits to represent weight, let's use a coding scheme. Instead of having all of them to represent weight, let's use a coding scheme. And this coding scheme that we're going to introduce says something like, Let's interpret the first bit as something. Let's interpret the next few bits as something else. And let's interpret the next bits as something else. So we're really working with a, a coding scheme that doesn't relate directly to normal binary numbers anymore. It's a coding scheme where your position inside the structure tells you what the bit represents. So what I want you to think back to is your scientific notation. 
If you wanted to write the number 527 in scientific notation, what you do is you say that is 5 times 10 to the power, uh, sorry, 5 dot 27 times 10 to the power 2. Right. So if you were to, to, to code this in a, in a way, if you had some agreement with a friend and you wanted to communicate this number, you could say um, the first number I'm going to give you is going to say whether it's positive or negative. So let's say we made this a 1 or a 0 to indicate the sign. And then I'm going to give you a number 527 or 527. Well, that's not a good example, actually. Um, kill that. What we're going to do is we're going to code binary numbers. And what I want you to think about is scientific notation where you have 527 represented by 5.27 times 10 to the power 2. We're going to do something similar in binary, and then we're going to slot this information that we have into that coding scheme. All right, that's all we're going to do. So in order to represent these uh, floating point binary numbers, the IEEE has st made two standards, single precision 32-bit format and double precision 64-bit format. And these are the two formats we use to represent our uh, our floating point numbers. The first one, 32-bit numbers, you represent by saying, let's, let's all decide to use the first bit as the sign, where a zero designs, denotes a plus and one denotes a negative. So that's similar to sign of magnitude and one's complement and two's complement. The first bit tells you what the sign is. Then the next eight bits out of the 32 represents your exponent. Just jumping back to the decimal, that's our exponent there. Um, this represents your exponent in binary. And then the final 23 bits represents our mantissa. And if you were to jump back to the decimal, that part there, that's your mantissa. All right. Note that I've excluded the 5 for a good reason, and I'll show you now why. Good, so what you have here is the definition. The definition says the value we're representing is equal to minus 1 to the power s, where s is that first bit. You can see that just changes the sign to plus or minus, times 1 point m, where m is this whole mantissa. See, that's the, the one that I excluded from the mantissa in the previous example. 1 dot mantissa, everything in binary, times 2 to the power e minus 1, 2, 7. And e is that there. So let's just look at this quickly. S is the sign, E is the exponent, and its range is, you can see it's 8 bits, so its range is 0 to 255. Five. So what we're doing when we say it's 1 dot M times E to the times 2 to the power E minus 1 to 7, what we're saying is this E can go from 255 five down to 0, that's its range, and then we're subtracting from it 127. So essentially we're saying this whole part here can go from minus 127 up to 128. That's the range of exponent that we can introduce by varying e from 0 to 255. So essentially we're saying we want to move this dot we want to be able to move it to the left and to the right. To the left, we want to be able to move it um, 127 places and 128 places to the right. That's the, the binary dot. We want to be able to move by coding something into this number representation of ours. There are some tricks here that you need to just be aware of quickly. If the exponent is all ones, if all those 8 bits are ones, we're talking about infinity if m is also equal to 0, and then also, if the exponent is equal to 0, our definition changes. Then it's not 1 dot m anymore. If the exponent is equal to 0, uh, sorry, if the, yeah, if the exponent is equal to 0, then our definition changes to minus 1 to the power s times 0 dot m times 2 to the e minus 1 to 6. Now, e is 0, so that becomes times 2 to the power minus 1 to 6, and then m determines what the value of your, your, value, what, of your um, number is.
you can see that the numbers that you can represent here has a massive range. You can represent numbers from 10 to the power minus 38, which is really small, and massive numbers of 10 to the power plus 38, which is really uh, quite large. Just something to add here. If this e is equal to 0 and m is equal to 0, then we're representing the number 0. So just look at this formula here. If we use this formula, there's no way to represent the number 0 because it's always going to be one dot something. One dot something. Uh, here, it's zero dot, and that's why we have this special case, to represent the number zero, and also to do very small fractions. Then there's also the double precision floating point, which is very similar. The only difference is now your exponent ranges from zero to 2047, because you have 11 bits for it, and your mantissa is also 52 bits. 64 bits is double precision floating point numbers. Exactly the same idea, it's just now the number we can represent is much smaller and much bigger as well. Let's look at an example real quick. If we have a 9-bit system, so we're using a 9-bit floating point system, let's call it the Tina system, and what, we, what I'm going to have to tell you in this system is, I'll tell you, the definition is that. The value I want to, rem I want to represent is given by that definition, and I tell you, the first bit is the sign, then I have 3 bits exponent, and then 5 bits mantissa. So a typical exam question would be, what is the biggest number that you can represent with this system? And the biggest number is um, infinity, which is where e is equal to 111. If you just flick back to this definition here quickly. When e is all 1s and m is 0, it represents infinity. All right, so we say if E is all ones, then it's infinity, so we can't represent a, uh, a bigger number than that. However, the biggest number apart from infinity that we can represent is when M is equal to all ones and when E is equal to 110. So just one less than infinity in our system. Just look at the definition again. If all those are ones and if... Um, e is equal to 6, that's the biggest it can be without it being infinity, then we have the largest number we can represent. Obviously, I'm imp implying here largest positive number as well, so s is equal to 0. So the largest number we can do is, uh, just replacing that function there, is 1 times 1 dot, and then this is our mantissa, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, times 2 to the power 6 minus 3. And if you calculate that, you get this here. And at this point, it's important to, to note that when you multiply, you shift the, when you multiply by 2, you shift the binary point to the left. When you divide by 2, you shift the binary point to the right. So if we multiply by 2 to the power 3, we're just shifting that 1, 2, 3 places. We're shifting the binary point, and that gives you that result there. Many people forget to do this, and then it really it becomes tricky because then you have to do uh, 1 plus a half, plus a quarter, plus an eighth, plus a sixteenth, plus a thirty-second um, times two to the power three. And then, then your math just becomes too difficult. So the easier thing to say is to just say that multiplied by two to the three means the binary point shifts three places, ending up with that number there. And if you take that number, you can easily see that's a quarter plus a half plus a one plus a two plus a four plus an eight which gives you 17.75. And that's the largest number, apart from infinity, that you can represent using the system. The smallest number you can represent is when e is equal to 0. And then our definition changes. Our definition changes to this. right? That's when e is equal to 0. So immediately, then, our definition that there becomes a 2. Just look at our standard definition here quickly. If m is equal to 0, then if yeah, sorry, if e is equal to 0, then that 1, 2, 3 becomes a 1, 2, 2. And same for the previous one. If e is equal to 0, that 1, 2, 7 there becomes a 1, 2, 6. Okay, so let's quickly look at that. The smallest number we can represent is if e is equal to 0, then the formula becomes this. And the smallest positive number we can represent is obviously if m is equal to all zeros except the least significant bit inside m is equal to 1. 
So if you put those values into the formula, you get it's 1 times, remember it's, uh, I should have said pos positive as well, smallest positive number, sorry. It's 1 times 0 dot and then the mantissa, and that's the smallest mantissa apart from 0 we can do, and times 2 to the power of minus 2. If you do this, you get it's 0 0.0001 times 2 to the power of minus 2, and you can either do it as I've done here, or you can just multiply the two out, and that gives you 1 over 28. The other important thing to realize, and I want you to take a deep breath here, is if you think back to your computer science or computer programming classes. In computer programming, as I told you, um, two's complement is used to represent negative numbers, and then your floating point is used to represent fractions. Floating point is used when you use C. So what I have here is just a definition, yet again, of single point precision for integer. And then I have a fraction of C code, or a, a small segment of C code. And what I've said is, I have one positive int is equal to 10, my negative int is equal to minus 10, my float is equal to that negative number there, and then I've written these into a file. So all I've done is I've used the fwrite instruction, which says, take from memory and dump it into a file. If you execute this file, then what you get in your file is this here. It's what's indicated in this small screenshot here. And this says, um, my posint, which is the first one we wrote into the file, is represented with a 0a, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. What's happening here is you need to read it from the right. You said 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, a. And you know the hex number a is just equal to 1010 in binary. It's just the decimal number 10. And that's why we have this here. The reason it's in the reverse order is our computers use something called little Indian, meaning the least significant byte is written first. The negative minus 10 is then FF, 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 F6. And if you use 2's complement to calculate that, you will see that's just equal to minus 10. The easy way to think about it is you can see that is F6, and that is, uh, well, you, you can calculate it using your, your two's complement um, information that you have. Then the last one, this floating point, we can see the computer represents this as C1, 2C, 0, 0, 0, 0. So let's quickly look at why that is. Why is minus 10.75, which is, you can see, a float here. Float means single point precision. Um, why is that represented as C12C0000? If you look at that number and you write it out in binary, what you find is this is it. That's C, that there. This here is the number 1. This here is the number 2. This here is the number C. Oh, sorry. Remember, if we work with hexadecimal to binary, we make groups of four ones for each hexadecimal character. That's why that C relates to that 110. And then the rest are just zeros. So if you take these binary bits and you split it into, into the definition, first bit is our negative. Then the next 8 bit bits, which looks a bit strange now because it's ordered differently, that next 8 bits you can calculate that's 2 plus 128, so it's 130. And our mantissa is just this long string of uh, ones and zeros here. So let's write it down. Let's calculate it. The value is, first of all, it's negative because it's a 1. And then 1 point mantissa. Remember, this 1 is part of the definition. It's not out of the mantissa. 1 point mantissa. If you write down this mantissa, you get 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then loads of zeros, which doesn't matter because it's to the right of the, the binary point. So it's 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, times, look at the definition, times 2 to the power exponent, which is 130, minus 127. If you calculate that there, you end up with 3. So all you need to do is you need to shift the binary point 3 positions, 1, 2, 3. So it gives you 101.11. And if you calculate that, it gives you 8 plus 2 plus a half plus a quarter is equal to minus 10.75. So go home and try to do the reverse now. Take this number and then using this definition, establish what the binary representation would be, this floating point binary. And then you should end up with this. And I can guarantee you will get this in the exam.